and welcome back to Metropole Sports Center. My name is Nashon Owano. As I promised you in the first part of the show, we are going to be talking about matters of boxing tonight. Um, boxing in Kenya has a couple of uh, challenges here and there. I think the most prominent boxing uh, conversation, conversation, I beg your pardon, that you usually talk about is the whole situation with the congestina Acheng. You are going to be demystifying some of the challenges and some of the things that can be done to support boxers in Kenya. Joining me in the studio is Dr. Sami Mahugu, who's the head of Health Promotion Unit at the Ministry of Health. Uh, Sami, welcome to Metropole Sports Center. Uh, Sante. Uh, thank you so much for finding time. Uh, probably somebody might be wondering, what is a doctor doing in a, a sports show? And uh, basically you're dressed uh, as a boxer. Um, maybe somebody would be interested. Are you a boxer yourself? Um, thank you for that question. Um, what I can say is that I train in boxing. I'm not uh, a boxer as such. I don't participate in the leagues and... Uh, those kind of tournaments. So what I do is boxing for exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there's an event that is uh, taking place uh, tomorrow in Kangemi. Maybe you can talk to us more about that, what the event is about. I'm being told this is uh, like the third edition of the boxing series that you're having. Mm. Yeah, maybe yes, you can yes, talk yes, to yes, us yes. about uh, that. Uh, maybe what I can do, I can talk about uh, the genesis, how we started off um, working together with the boxing fraternity. Um, so it was, uh, I've been in boxing for about a year now. I always try to join a new sport every 10 year, 10 year of my life. Mm -hmm. So I happen to be in my 40s, now I decided to join boxing. But in order for me to even rethink of uh, joining the sport, because I've been doing athletics before, um, the coronavirus is what actually triggered me into joining the sport because when we first arrived and the lockdowns came and we started seeing a lot of people dying and we we're seeing the, von the, the, the people who are more likely to contract the disease are those who have non-communicable disease such as diabetes and heart disease, then as a doctor, they automatically had to think of a sport <clears throat> and if possible, one that works out the full body so that you are constantly fit and also one that does not require so much time uh, to, to get you the required output. So that is why I ended up either between choosing swimming and boxing, but uh, we happened to meet with the boxers from Kangemi after the coronavirus lockdown, the first one, when they had been kicked out of Kangemi and they were coming now to our area to train. And uh, there was a bit of a conflict at that time, but we were able to resolve it and we became friends uh, from there on. Okay. Yeah. Somebody will be interested to know um, what's the demographic of the people that will be participating in tomorrow's mm. event? Is there like an age limit to the people that will be in tomorrow's tournament? Uh, Okay, uh, so first of all, tomorrow's tournament is going to be held uh, outside Kangemi Naiva Supermarket. We're going to put up a ring there. And we're going to, the, the whole point of this uh, exercise is to recruit boxers from uh, Kangemi. We've realized, we work together with the police and the chief, and we've realized that uh, the, uh, given the way the economy, I think, is shrinking or yeah, things are not do, uh, working out so well for the entire majority of uh, people in Kangemi, we realize we need to see, do something, see how we can bring in more uh, young men who are likely to go into crime uh, under this banner of gloves, not guns, so that we can be able to see how best you can be productive with yourself as a boxer rather than risking your life as a criminal. Okay. You mentioned that uh, you started it just at the onset of COVID-19. That's like almost a year a year and a few months down the line. Um, based on your, on, your, on your assessment or on your interaction with people, how would you gauge the reception of people to boxing in that locality? I must say that uh, the people of Kangemi and other Mibitas, we focus basically on slums. So Kangemi, Kibera, uh, wherever we have slums, we have noticed that the uptake for boxing or the appreciation uh, the, the, the peop is, is, is tremendous. I mean, you find the people climbing trees just to watch men fight. And uh, it's, it's, it's really tremendous and we hope now with time we'll also be able to reach out to the middle class and uh, probably the wealthy. So we can be able to bring this kind of entertainment to your homes or to your local entertainment uh, areas. Okay. 
Um, we were having this conversation with you, Ophir, just before we came uh, on, on TV. And uh, we were taking a commentary on um, generally how boxing has changed over the years. Um, from your assessment, I mean, looking at the times of Akina Robert Wangila to now, a lot has pretty much um, a change. What do you think was being done then that is not being done now to rally people to support boxing more? Mm. I think now we've gone full circle because when I joined boxing last year, I think it was at its, it was at its, uh, I mean, it was at the bottom, it was at rock bottom because uh, we were talking about a situation where the league is no longer being held. We are talking about a situation where all these young boxers, most of them are under the age of 25, most of them have lost jobs in the hospitality industry. So now what, what, what we've realized is that now this year, the government has really assisted us a lot. Because the social hall where I train, Kangemi Social Hall, you find it has been renovated. Um, we've had a, we have a hospital that was constructed in record time just next to the hall. So we've gone full circle and government is almost kind of like trying to come, go head back to the days of uh, the great Robert Wangila Napuni. Mm -hmm. And uh, witness to some of these uh, efforts is uh, Maurice Maina, who you mentioned, who was part of the Skid Squad and who is uh, one of our good friends mm -hmm. and will actually be with us tomorrow. So the kind of support that they, they received during their time is what I think I am witnessing now with uh, kind, kind, uh, the, the government efforts that uh, we are seeing. Okay. Um, a very topical issue that people are usually uh, talking. I'm, I'm going to segue a bit from tomorrow's event. Um, a key thing that mainly affects athletes is mental health. I think this is a conversation that was going on during the Tokyo Olympics. But the reality is that mental health is important in all cadres of a sport. Um, based on your interaction with boxing for the past one year, what mm -hmm. would you comment on based the mental health of boxers in Kenya? Okay. Uh, again, thank you for thank you for that question. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is the other reason why I really needed to go into boxing is because um, being a civil servant and having travelled through all 47 counties uh, on assignment to government work, mm. I always realised or felt that there is a gap in my skill set, and that was specifically with, to do with slums. So, given the lockdown situation and the fact that we're supposed to work from home, it was easier for me to be able to best understand the situation in slums. Uh, now, from an empirical perspective, being able to physically go there and engage yourself, look for something that will keep you going there every day. Like for me, it was boxing. And uh, really, what has uh, saddened me and surprised me is the level of stress and mental, the level of mental issues that are existent or prevalent in the slums. They, I mean, I mean, without a doubt, out of all the 47 counties I've been to, a slum dweller is easily the most stressed individual and an individual who is most likely to head into mental health problems if not uh, checked. Okay. Um, what more needs to be done to support uh, mental health within those localities? Mm. Because I think it's only now that Kenya is catching up to the whole conversation of mental health. I mean, it has been there. But uh, not much has quite been done in the past. So what can be done to ensure that um, uh, we talk about this issue of mental health? I think the best approach is uh, not specifically to look at a human being from the part of the body that is affected, but rather to look at what we call the social determinants of health, the environment in which these human beings are living. Is it conducive enough for them to be comfortable, to thrive, to be productive? Or is it a stressful environment where even if I give you drugs that will help you relieve symptoms of depression, you are likely to be either on drugs for life or really in a situation where you are unlikely to get out of that problem. So the kind of support that we get from the government, if we can really go up or it can improve, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to make a lot of headway. Okay. Um, maybe the other thing that uh, is topical when talking about athletes and uh, specifically to boxers is about uh, the whole issue of uh, financial management. You've seen situations where athletes are, you know, uh, once they retire, they don't quite have that. I think that's also something that is closely tied to the issue of uh, mental health. Um, what more needs to be done to give them with it, to equip them with the right skill sets, you know, to probably prepare them for life after retirement? Yes, so 
Yeah, that's one huge gap I also noticed. Uh, I don't think Kenya is unique to the problems we, we, we see or find in the U.S. or other Western countries where sporting athletes, whether it's basketball, NFL, boxing, end up really wasting all the finances or the money that they make over their career. And uh, one thing I've realized is that uh, most individuals you'll find who are in the boxing uh, fraternity really do not have that high a level of education. Most of them are standard dropouts. So obviously the skills that you expect them to have uh, with regards to maintaining their own finances or being organized is really lacking. And uh, they are in that direction, they need mentorship. You don't need to go back to class. What they need is mentorship. Mm. These guys, I mean, they have the basics of education that you need or that you can get from outside of class. And, and it's, it's enough. You don't need to teach a, a boxer agriculture and things like that. They don't need it. Just uh, give them the mentorship they require. That's what we try doing. Uh, we have set up uh, rabbit, uh, rabbit hatches, chicken projects, boda bodas. I mean, all sorts of income generating activities that help them realize that boxing sometimes you can get an injury what will you do i mean you need to find a way or think of alternative ways of sustaining yourself in the event uh, things don't work out or you retire for example okay yeah. um finally as we wrap up this conversation we can never quite run away from the government you know it has a huge role to play in uh, sports um what more needs to support the boxing space in kenya because in athletics, the support is immense. Not saying that there is, you know, bias in terms of that, but the reality is that there are some sports that are given more support than, you know, mm. others. So what more needs to be done to um, avoid such kind of a situation? Mm -hmm. So I think the, 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 the one thing that I can almost say would be a sure bet is if you look at the demographic, the Kenya demographic population, especially in urban areas like Nairobi, Majority of us are youth. We are under the age of 25. That is, that is just the reality. They're the majority. So we either get them jobs or we keep them busy or we just figure out a way of ensuring that the situation that they are in currently, economically, does not really spiral out of control. And the one way I think I can do that, or we can do that, is to support us. We are talking about gloves, not guns. See how government can continue doing its work in all so, uh, social halls, improve them, and not just the physical improvement, but also the more important human resource that is required within the county. So, and I guess that's really the bigger picture based on what I am seeing in the counties. And uh, for me, I can basically say um, the, 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 I'm very optimistic. Uh, the future looks very bright. We just keep, need to keep the momentum going and. Uh, Keep these kids patient somehow. They are very, very impatient, but yeah, with time we'll manage. Okay. Mm. That was uh, Dr. Sami Mahugu talking about the boxing tournament that is going to be taking place tomorrow in Kangemi. If you're within uh, um, Kangemi area, then find your way next to the Naivas supermarket. I'm pretty sure you'll not miss that. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the directions on how to get to the place uh, later on in the show. Since we are talking about matters uh, boxing, the following are just some of the interesting facts that you needed to understand about uh, boxing as a sport um, generally. Just before I mention that, important to mention that the game of boxing has changed quite a lot since its inception. History dates back to a time in the, in, the, in, the, in the invention of boxing when the game in itself people had to sit down and box each other gloves off until they passed out. That was probably in the medieval times. But at, with time that whole issue has changed and a lot has been done to improve the way the safety of the sport of the sport as it is today. Now, boxing was introduced into the Olympics in ancient Greek in 688 BC. Um, if you follow history and philosophy quite well, then you'll basically understand that 
uh, Greece or ancient Greek was the genesis of some of the modern day developments that we have here. From uh, the whole topic of philosophy during uh, um, the time of uh, Plato, you know, uh, Socrates, uh, during that time, Greek is uh, ancient Greek is actually attributed to a lot of civilization as you're seeing it today. Now, Jack Broughton, the reigning champion from 1734 to 1758, was the first person to introduce a boxing school. He has been tagged as, uh, he's actually been named, he's considered as the father of boxing school as it is today. Probably he could be one of the people that set the path to the introduction of the rules, you know, uh, the boxing technique in itself and also the safety of putting on gloves on. The ancient god that is Apollo was believed to be the creator and the guardian of uh, boxing. We understand how the ancient Greek was so mythological in its own belief system. And then Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao earned 120 million and 80 million respectively for their fight on May 3rd, 2015. Uh, that that fight was actually dubbed the fight of the century. That is Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. And a lot of money was flying in that particular tournament. Um, I'm going to be talking about more about the money in boxing later on in our Money Ref segment later on in the show. And Jack Marley's invented the very first mouth guard for boxers in 1902. The mouth guards were designed to be worn during training sessions as a way to protect their teeth of fighters. Nowadays it's pretty hard to see boxers fighting without the mouth guard. At least now you understand who actually invented the mouth guard as it is right now. And Mohammed Ali's gloves that he used against Sonny Litson was sold at $836,000. That is 50 years later after the fight of the legendary fighters. You can't talk about boxing without talking about Mohammed Ali. One of of the strongest and visible faces in boxing. In one of his quotes, he said, fight, um, uh, you know, uh, in one of uh, the quotes which I'm going to be giving on, on later on in the show, that is on the uh, sports quotes, I'm going to be picking out one of my personal uh, favorites, uh, quotes from Mohammed Ali. Now, the sports facts wrap up the second part of Metropole Sports Center. We do take a short commercial break. After the break, I'm going to be giving you the numbers in the fight uh, that took place this past week at the Tottenham Stadium. That is Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua. The world has a new boxing champion and that is the Ukrainian, that is Alexander Usyk. See you after the break.